What's up, Prime fam? What's going on, guys? As always, Brandon Teets, owner and coach here at Prime Strength. And today, we're covering the topic of hip height in the deadlift. This is one of the most misunderstood topics. And just to dive right into it, a lot of people are going to tell you, keep your hips higher in the deadlift, keep your hips lower in the deadlift. It's different for conventional than it is for sumo, et cetera, et cetera. In reality, none of these people are actually correct because the right answer is your hip height is always going to be a byproduct of the rest of your setup procedure and your anthropometry, meaning your limb lengths and your individual genetic differences. So in actuality, you never want to think about how high or low you're setting your hips. Rather, you want to execute all the other variables and then the byproduct of that will determine your proper hip height. So let's dive into this topic a little deeper. Now, just to give you a little background information on myself, in case you're new to the channel, I've actually deadlifted 727 pounds myself in the conventional stance. Now, we also have two other coaches here at Prime, uh, Andrew, who is a sumo polar, and then also Kristen Sheely, she's also a sumo polar. And this advice is going to apply to everyone at all levels, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced trainee, you have to follow the procedures I'm going to give you. And then the hip height will end up being a byproduct of all those things at the end end of it. So don't even think about your hip height, rather follow these procedures and understand the rest of it is a byproduct. Now, step number one, you have to always follow is foot position. Your foot is always going to be about cut in half by the bar from your starting position. And then you're going to actually bend down, bending both the knees and hips in position until two things happen. One, your shin is going to come in contact with the bar. And then secondly, your scapula is going to be directly above the bar. Now, if you don't know exactly where the scapula is, the way to trace this is the line of your triceps and rear delt that connect into your back. That is basically where your scapula is. So you want that to be in a straight line above the bar when you're in the side position of a sumo or a conventional polar. And if you achieve these two things while also properly setting your back and your brace, your hip heights will just be in position wherever they are. So you never actually want to think about where your hips are in space, but rather you must achieve your foot position, your scapula position. And then if we're talking about the sumo deadlift position, how externally rotated or open your hips are, and then the rest just falls into place. So personally, I never even think about my hips when I'm setting everything up. Instead, I think about my feet, my scapula, my back, and my brace, and then the rest is a byproduct of it all. Now, when comparing two lifters from the side, such as me and Coach Andrew, what you're going to find is if they execute these procedures correctly, the hip height will actually be a variable of all those procedures, followed by our anthropometry, meaning our limb lengths, our torso lengths, etc., that will then dictate a different hip height position from lifter A to lifter B. So if you look at me and Andrew both setting up in a conventional stance, our hips are at different heights, even though we're doing the same procedure because our arm lengths are different, our limb lengths are different in our femurs, our torso lengths are different. Everything that is unique about us from a genetic standpoint will therefore dictate a different hip height position unless we happen to be about the same build. Now we are actually around the same height. We're both about six feet tall. And just because we're the same height though, does not mean the hip height is going to be the same because again, it's more about proportions rather than your actual just height of your body. Even when we're differentiating between the sumo and a conventional deadlift, like you see me and Andrew doing, it doesn't matter whether we're both performing a sumo deadlift or we're both performing a conventional deadlift. From a side to side perspective, our hip heights end up in different positions, even though we're the same height. What this means again is that our anthropometry is really the deciding factor after the proper setup procedures are followed in the deadlift that will then dictate your hip height. Now, someone sharp might say, well, why not just artificially raise your hips a little bit higher to make something more back and glute dominant rather than quad dominant, but this will then break those setup rules. So for instance, if I lift my hips up into the air, what you'll find is either my shins move away from the bar, or even if they move away from the bar and then I bring the bar close into the shins again, now my scapula is not directly above the line of pole. And so we're always going to be breaking those two rules that one, your shins have to be in contact with the bar and two, your scapula has to be directly directly above the bar. So if you artificially try to change your hip height position, this will then lead to improper procedures in that setup that I gave you guys. 
The problem with this is if your scapula is in front of the bar or too far behind the bar, this will equate to poor leverage and you'll either bleed back into position over the bar or you'll start too far in front of the bar and that'll lead to a lot of backgrounding and other problems. You always want to have leverage on your side and the best way to pull the deadlift is in a straight line, which means your scapula has to be directly above the bar since that is where your arms are attached to on your body. Now in closing, what I'd recommend for you guys to do at home is to film your deadlift setup and the sets themselves from a side view, a perfect side view. This gives you a ton of information to really see if you're following these setup procedures because I find when people are asking about their hip height in the deadlift, this is because they don't have a proper setup and they're not executing these variables and thus it feels awkward where they should be putting their hips in space because they're not doing the rest of the setup correctly. Now if you guys are interested in coaching and helping with this, Go ahead and check out our website. We have a ton of one-on-one -on -one coaching packages we offer. We're also getting ready to release the group coaching again for season two. We just are finishing up season one with a whole group of guys. It's been going amazing and we're offering actually new programs there. We're gonna have a powerlifting program, a physique oriented program, and then what we're calling the fusion program, which is really a power building program. I just don't like the name power building, so I'm changing it to fusion training. And that's what we're gonna be offering. So go check out the website. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if it helped you out, let me know in the comment section down below. And also, if you have anything you want me to cover in future videos, I love hearing your guys' your guys's suggestions. So leave it down below in the comments. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.